top right corner. Hit, middle center plate. Oh, awesome. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Okay, today I want to do another entry into the overview of our long range rifles. Um, here I've got a Howe 1500 that was the first rifle I got um, years ago to be able to go through, uh, to be able to start in the long range shooting. Um, we started in this one shooting in the 800 and uh, 600 and 800 and 1000 yards and very quickly moved on from that point. But back then it was sold in Australia as the Howe 1500 and the 243. Um, it was in uh, Black Hawk Axion stock um, and shot pretty well. Uh, we went through and did some basic bits and pieces, had um, various scopes, starting from a Nikko scope, Sterling scope, ranging up to a Citron scope, um, and that shot with that for quite a while. We had a 56mm Citron scope on it, uh, but upgraded to this, as you can see here, uh, where we've got it now. This is the Night Force Attacker, um, probably my favourite scope for ELR shooting, and I would qualify that a little bit um, to say that I do have a lot of Night Force scopes now. I have um, several of these Night Force Attackers, I have a Night Force Beast. Um, I'm not the person that is brand loyal for the sake of being brand loyal. I chose this scope because it suits what I wanted to do the best. I like the it's MOA, I like the MOA reticle, I like the quality of the scope, I like the um, the second focal plane side of the scope is, is very much what suits what we do um, and for that reason it, all the features, all the bits and pieces it got, it hasn't got more than what I want um, and it hasn't got less than what I want. I really like these scopes and that's why I have them. Anyway, the Night Force scope is what's on there. Um, it's in obviously a different chassis now. This is actually the XLR Industries Evolution or Heavy Duty Evolution um, chassis um, which is largely as it comes. I've changed a couple of bits on it and um, I've made the little bag ride on the back here. There was a little rail that came through, it was a little short sort of bag rider. I've lowered that bag ride a little bit, made it a little bit larger. It's just out of aluminium, not much extra weight, but I've lowered that. Every, I've also made a little cut out on the top here so you can actually see that this, um, I can actually remove my bolt um, without having to take any rails off just by simply taking this piece off and cutting a little groove out here. It doesn't affect where my cheek is or any of that sort of stuff. Made a little modification there. Um, up the front here I have my new bipod system um, which I've been through and shown a bit of a video on that side of things. That's still in development but that's all. That's essentially running the long Atlas legs. I've made some custom feet for it now. I've got my swivel system so the bipod it's, uh, actually lets the rifle swivel through here. It is the Atlas so they fold around really neatly, um, they're really nice to use, so we'll see that that's in development, but that's all working properly. I'm probably going to change, um, when I can get it in Australia, to the shorter um, barrel guard, so I get a little bit more mechanical advantage out of, the, um, out of the, the length of the bipod, but we'll see how that goes. And we'll run a rail underneath here as well, so this one is set up to be able to shoot um, on our tripod slash bipod system with a quick release on here so it runs the rail on the bottom there. Send it, um, other than that it all is the uh, <laughs> <I haven't done laughs> modification with the way the box magazine works. Haven't done any other modifications to the chassis. Up the front of the rifle um, I have my three port. I only need a two port for the 243. Um, the three port is I, I I just wanted it out on there. It looks a little, um, a little more um, streamlined to go with things. Um, works brilliantly. That did help. We were running a, um, a hinterland shooting supply break. A good break, but had a little bit of downforce in it, so it was making the front of the muzzle drop on the shot. Um, with this, it shoots very nice. Another video on that showing that side of things. But that's all working really well. It is the standard barrel still. 
and the standard action. Not been blueprinted, not had anything done to it. It is only a 1 in 10 twist, which limits me to the 95 grain projectile. Um, when this barrel wears out and when it stops shooting as well as it does, which is extremely well, um, I will then go to a 1 in 8 or a 1 in 7 twist, um, and who knows whether that's going to an Ackley Improved chamber um, or that's it certainly will be a heavy barrel. It's 24 inches at the moment. I will go to 26 inches. I won't go past that point, uh, but I'll put, certainly put some more weight in the barrel and go even further. But it's, this thing still shoots very, very accurately. We're probably up and around the 2,000 rounds. It's still shooting beautifully. Um, it still has good bullet speed. Um, the, the 95 is as heavy as I can go, like I said. But as you'll see in this clip here, I have been able to shoot to two, or just under 2,000 meters and hold down a decent group on a plate. Um, so very happy with it. Great yeah. to shoot. Zombies swinging with around. Bipod system shooting. It's still very accurate. We tried shooting at a mile, which is probably a little far for a sitting shot. Uh, but I have shot, um, I think that was a Moving second off. shot hit or a third shot hit out at 1,400 yards. Uh, we're, we're just back into a little more stability. Uh, but shooting great. Mm -hmm. Only other mods and bits and pieces, I should say, on it, uh, which are some details. I have in here one of my normal, what I tend to run, which is the US Optics um, swivel bubble level. So that tucks away, folds out over here, and I'll just double levels in there, uh, which is what I use on that side of things. I put on one of these, which has the um, scope bolt or the, for, for, the, for the scope nuts or the ring nuts. It uh, has a spanner in there, that's the TAC Plus knob that I simply took that out, um, hand ground that down, filed it to round, and then threaded it to put that on so it was a job that you know I did in the in the home garage um, the other details and the thing that I've that I've done here which is a little bit of a compromise no issues in this um, caliber but something I went to without going custom that still made it work and that is the rail and ring combination this is 120 minutes of internal elevation in this attacker scope for that as you know how I set things up I want 60 minutes of rail rings combination. Um, to do that you're either completely custom or this being a Hauer short action um, there isn't any, well being a Hauer in general they aren't quite as well serviced as the likes of the um, Remington 700s but what I have been able to do I've got, this is a Hauer, sorry, a Remington 700 long action rail which you can buy from a few places from Night Force is one of them which is where this comes from this is a long action 40 mm a rail what that means is I've chopped it off here that's just running run one bolt in the rear I'm running a tiny bit of Loctite um, between the rail and the, and the action it's the two bolts at the front and there's only one bolt in the rear so <coughs> like I said it's a tiny bit compromised it's not perfect doesn't cause any issues in the very low, low recoil but by doing that I've got a fitted rail, it all bolted on there properly, short action, power, long action, Remington 700 rail, gave me the 40 minute rail there, with the 20 minute um, ultralight uh, uni mount from Night Force, gives me my 60 minutes, um, and then I'm zeroed at 100 yards, where with this one I actually get a full 125 minutes of ele elevation out of that, but that's, like I said, that's a feature that's not perfect, in the, per in the perfect world I would find a short action 40 MOA rail but I didn't have the choice of this one anyway that's this that's a quick overview of this rifle shoots really well it's an awesome setup we're obviously just at the moment doing another Hauer 1500 in the 65 Creedmoor uh, which is really um, starting to come along just as well at the moment that's just in a, in a little um, laminated Boyd stock um, we're going to go through a process and build but this is probably one of the, the top level of the places to take this um, essentially barreled action in a Howe 1500 to turn it into what is one of my favourite guns. Anyway, that's the overview of our 243 um, Howe 1500.